This section heading is called Analysis of the Vulnerability. So in Lab 4, we added some PHP code to our custom homepage. This code made our site susceptible to HTML injections. So what we're going to do here in this section is we're going to analyze and pinpoint the vulnerability within that code. Now that code is located on the Yearbank server inside of our custom homepage. So what we're doing here is we're establishing a session with that backend server. And then once we're on here, we're going to be using a stream editor so we can analyze things. Now the reason we're using the stream editor is because we can do things in a lot less steps. The first thing that we're doing here is we're just pulling out lines of our custom homepage. So essentially we're just viewing the code that we added, the PHP code. So now that file is down the following path. And there's the name of our custom homepage. So the way that this reads with said here is we're using the dash N option to disable auto printing of the whole file. And we're only going to print what is outlined by the P command over here, which is lines 9 through 17. And that's what we can see down here. Now, if we ask me, if you ask me what the vulnerability is in here, it's the request function. So if you can recall from lab three with SQL injections, we said that the vulnerability existed because we weren't securing the input. So we essentially supplied special characters to the input fields. They were allowed to alter the PHP query statement. And because of that, it created the vulnerability. And this is pretty much the same thing because we're not securing the input, what is being supplied here as the input. So what's happening is we're passing this down to echo and then echo is essentially printing that inside of the client side file. And that's how our injection occurs. So again, vulnerability request function. So there's something else about this request function that we're going to review in the section here. So the reason we altered it in the URL is because your request function, the variable in here can be set via post, get, or even a cookie input mechanism within PHP. So to analyze that this provides that functionality with Git, we're going to actually, you know, do a couple steps. So again, the vulnerability is not securing the input, the functionality that's also provided with this with get that's technically, it's not technically a vulnerability. It allows you to exploit the vulnerability when it's not secured in a more easier fashion. So if you look in security documentation, it's actually going to tell you because of that, you know, to actually shy away from even using this. So, all right. So now let's review how we can do that with Git, and we'll verify that that Git is what allowed us to exploit this vulnerability. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to use the stream editor once again. And with this stream editor, we're going to say dash I. So we're going to edit the file in place. The file in place is going to be our custom homepage. And we're going to edit lines 10 through 12. And we're going to substitute the following within there. So we're going to substitute the word request with the word get on those lines. And again, this is our custom homepage that we're doing this to. So hit enter, hit the up arrow key, scroll through command history, and verify. And we can see that's exactly what we did. Okay, so now we're going to open up a new terminal and we're going to analyze things. So open new terminal. In the new terminal, we're going to start Wireshark and we're going to free up the terminal by having it run as a back process. So hit enter. Once Wireshark starts up, we'll sniff on ETH0. And then again, what we're doing here is we're seeing things how they normally are. And then we're seeing things when we actually did the exploit. So once this starts up, we're going to apply a filter for HTTP traffic only. So close this error message, double click ETH0, come to the filter, type HTTP, hit enter to apply the filter. Then I'm going to minimize Wireshark, minimize this terminal, minimize this terminal, and then go and open up a browser. So I'm going to navigate to yourbank.com. And what we're going to do here is this. So we're going to see or get a web page and we're going to see the normal process of getting that web page. Now what you're going to find here in the process is we issue 
or we use the get method, the HTTP get method, to retrieve a web page. That's what we normally do. So yourbank.com, hit enter. We received our custom homepage, and now we're going to set the value here. So we're setting this, again, via the get method, and we can see over here when we supplied the value for my username for the variable, with some HTML, we can see the HTML got rendered, and if we right-click and view the page source, we can see the insertion. So now I'm just going to close this, minimize this, go over to Wireshark, and then inside of Wireshark, you can see that whole process. So here you can see the source, and then the destinations, the server. So source is Kali, destination server, using the HTTP, yeah, HTTP protocol, and we're issuing a GET request to retrieve a web page. So we're usually using that get method anyways. Now because that request function on the back end on the server allows that variable to be set within the URL, that's what we're doing down here. So you can see over here get, setting that variable, and then getting the web page, right? So again, that's where the vulnerability exists, not necessarily with the functionality, it just it makes it easier. And I guess the way a security term you could say this is it increases the risk associated with exploiting that vulnerability. So now we're going to come back over to the terminal here and we're just going to put things back. So I'm going to hit the up arrow key two times and we're going to substitute the word git with the word request hit enter, and then up arrow key, verify, and then we're done.